Hi guys. Okay, so today we're going to go through um, mRNA versus protein, and we're going to build some intuitions about the cell from calculations related to these two things. Um, to start, we're going to ask a question, which is about how big are these two things? Um, if you know the central dogma, you'll know that um, there is kind of this DNA to RNA to protein um, idea. And um, I'm not going to explain that further here, so you should read up on it elsewhere um, to understand kind of the basic building blocks of this lecture. But because in this lecture, I want to focus on um, kind of how are these two things related? And specifically, I'm interested in, you know, about how big a mRNA is versus a protein. This is important because um, it might help us estimate some other properties of the cell. So my baseline intuition before going into all this was just kind of an mRNA is like this small little thing, which kind of encodes for information, and proteins like this humongo kind of functional object that um, dwarfs the mRNA in size, and that there might be many mRNAs, you know, that would you know help make many proteins, but kind of the relative size um, would be in the protein's favor. Um, so we're going to check that intuition. Um, and the first thing we want to do is um, look at these two objects. So, you know, both RNA and protein are made up of building blocks. RNA is made up of nucleotides. Protein is made up of amino acids. And the first thing is that the um, building blocks are actually of about similar size. Um, so if you just look at the length kind of of the um, building block, you'll see it's about three to four um, atoms in length for both of them. Um, and so that's an interesting first intuition, which is that if we had a same number of nucleotides amino acids, we'd get a similar you know, length uh, in atoms. The second thing you'll need to uh, know to compare between the RNA for a protein and the protein itself is the relative ratio of building blocks between the two. And um, to do this, we're going to need to figure out the um, code uh, between mRNA and protein. Now, um, what you'll need to know is that there are four options at each mRNA position um, for potential nucleotides you can use to code for something. And at each position in a protein, there's 20 amino acids. Um, and so if you want to encode for any arbitrary 20 amino acid protein with nucleic acids, and you said one position, you couldn't do it. Because four um, options per position and one position you know, to specify one amino acid would mean you could at most specify um, one amino acid. Now, if you had two positions, um, you could combinatorially combine uh, the options in both to get a total of a potential 16 amino acids, still not enough. And so what we see is the minimum number of positions um, required to specify 20 amino acids. And we really overshoot it. So there's a lot of redundancy here. But the minimum number um, is about three positions, which is something that in biology you call um, a codon. And um, so basically uh, what this tells us is there's a three to one ratio of uh, building blocks between mRNA and protein. And so therefore there is a three to one length ratio and whatever length scale you want um, between mRNA and protein. And so actually this intuition about size was totally off and mRNA is like this ginormous thing and proteins like, you know, by length smaller. Um, and furthermore, what you'll see in the next picture is proteins fold up a lot. So even if the length of an mRNA is like, you know, uh, three times the protein, the protein is then even further compacted to be this tiny little kind of module. And so this is a picture from the wonderful textbook, Cell Biology by the Numbers, in which you can see that mRNA is this huge thing and the protein in comparison is you know insanely compacted and here the difference is even more magnified by the fact that mRNA is about a thousand bases that's because it's a eukaryotic cell that has some non-coding regions in the DNA but what you can see here is that the coding sequence of 465 bases corresponds perfectly um, or, or kind of roundabout to 3x the number of amino acids. And so the takeaways here are um, number one that the um, uh, ratio of uh, building block size to building block size between mRNA to protein is about to one to one. Number two, the ratio of number of building blocks in mRNA to protein is about three to one. And that therefore, mRNA, mRNA is way bigger than protein by length. And if you compact the protein to be like um, very small, which you might have to do to create its function, then there's just kind of this huge size differential. Okay, so that's the first intuition is mRNA dwarfs protein. 
Um, now, the second thing we're going to look at here is a um, bacterial cell. And what you'll see here um, is uh, really interesting, which is this light material kind of in the middle. This is the uh, DNA that encodes for the genes, the bacteria. And what you can see is it takes up an insane fraction of the bacterial volume. So you can, you know, from this picture, almost look at the bacteria like it's a big sack of DNA. Um, and while, you know, not all of this DNA codes for, you know, protein and mRNA, you know, a portion of it may be a regulatory sequence, um, you know, a large fraction, especially for a very compact genome, um, will uh, be coding directly for RNA. So if you were to make basically one RNA for every gene um, in this equalized genome, you wouldn't get exactly this amount of nucleic acid back, but you'd get, you know, on the order of that potentially. Um, and so basically there's just like, if you were to make as much, if you were to like double the amount of nucleic acid, there's like not enough room in the cell really to do that. And imagine trying to make even more RNAs than that. So the other th you know, intuition I had, I used to have was that, oh, you know, like there's maybe, you know, hundreds, like maybe thousands of RNAs um, per gene. Um, but if you look at this picture, that just can't be true for all genes because you would just massively increase the amount of nucleic acid in the cell. Um, and so actually what you, what you do see um, in most cells is somewhere between, um, and this, you know, varies a lot and you can have bursts of, you know, on a single gene having a ton of RNAs, but like on average, somewhere between one, maybe one to 10 um, uh, mRNAs uh, per, per gene. And if you look in the eukaryotic cells where, you know, the number of genes, every time I look it up, it kind of changes, but, you know, let's say 20 to 40 K or so for magnitude, yeah, uh, uh, of genes in the eukaryotic cell, um, there's actually about 200 K mRNAs, um, you know, for a, a, a sort of an average cell. Um, and so you can see this, um, without really expanding your cell volume, this, this ratio um, kind of has to hold. Um, which is which is kind of interesting uh, across cell types, and so yeah, your second intuition is that you know, instead of having you know a ton of um, uh, you know mRNA per gene, you only get a few, um, which is kind of interesting. Um, and so now we're going to go and we're going to ask the question of okay, given you only have a few RNAs per gene. Um, can we then derive, given what we've talked about so far, the number of proteins in the cell? Because remember, in a previous video, we asked the question of, can we guess that by volume? And we got a certain answer. Um, let's see if we can rederive um, the same answer, or maybe not try to bias ourselves too much, um, from just this other kind of line of reasoning. So what you're looking at here is a bunch of you know, little proteins. Uh, ribosomes are you know, some of the larger proteins in the cell. And they're uh, transiting across the mRNA. And you can see here that there is a ton of little machines on the mRNA making protein. And here, actually, it's really cool. It's a little chain. You can even see the little building blocks, right? Right there, of a protein being made from the mRNA. As each of these machines wanders along the mRNA, it's kind of creating a little protein string alongside of it. And uh, one important thing to note here is the length scale. So it looks like um, each of these ribosomes is, we're going to say about 10 nanometers, which if you saw the previous video is equivalent to about 100 atoms in length. Um, and this is a little bit wrong. I mean, if you really look, you know, and at this and try to estimate it correctly, it should be closer to um, about 20 nanometers, but we're just going to let that slide. Um, and so the first question to ask here is, um, let's take a typical uh, mRNA length. So maybe let's say about a one um, uh, kilo, kilobase mRNA, or 1,000 bases. And remember, I, I, I mentioned that each uh, base is about three to four atoms across. So there are more atoms than that in the base, but it's about that number of atoms if you take the length of it in the chain. And so that means that each mRNA um, is going to be about 3K atoms. And so basically, um, if you look here at this picture, um, there's Next to each protein, there's kind of a little space here. Um, and so basically for each protein, you have 100 atoms, um, 100 atoms, and then you have a 100 atoms in a space. And so you have about 200 atoms to include both the protein and the space next to it. And so if you ask how many proteins and space next to them there are um, across a 1K RNA chain, you would divide um, the RNA length of atoms, so 3K atoms, um, just maybe say that angstroms, um, by about um, 200 atoms. And so then you'd get, let's see, that would be 15, um, 15 positions. And so, okay, we have 15 positions. Um, and so at any one point in time on a 1KB RNA, 
you're gonna have maybe about 15 ribosomes, right? That's actually kind of an approachable number. So let's let's look over here. Okay, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Um, so if we just take this little segment right here, this guy might actually be on the order of one KB. So it's, it's kind of cool. We, we can link, you know, a picture that we just saw on the previous slide. Um, uh, so I'll actually just take you back to that quickly. Um, so you can say here, the kind of, you know, 1KB mRNA uh, in a diagram format. And you come back here, you can say, okay, well, no, like this is a real picture. Like someone actually took this with like electrons and photons coming from a real sample. And you can see 1KB, um, you know, right here. And you can see a bunch of proteins on the 1KB. Um, and so that's just kind of a, a cool link to make. Now, um, we have this knowledge of like there's 15 ribosomes that can fit on this 1KB mRNA at any one point in time. I'll give you another piece of information, which is each ribosome can move about its own width every second. So basically, each ribosome can translate one width to the right um, every second. And that means that, say we have 15 positions um, you know, with ribosome plus spacer in this mRNA, that means we have 30 total positions to move across. Um, so that means you can get about 30 trans, um, oh, sorry, it takes about 30 seconds then for a ribosome to move across a, a 1KB RNA. And so that means that it's about two um, proteins from one ribosome. If we're to loop back and do the same thing right, at, right away um, per 1KB mRNA per minute. And now the, the last thing we want to do is say, okay, for each mRNA, about how many protein, how about how long do proteins have to you know, make copies of it? And so the cell um, in E. coli takes about 20 minutes to divide. So we're going to use that as a metric because, you know, once it divides, there's uh, double the space. And so that's kind of a good proxy for the half-life of the mRNA. And so basically um, what that means is if it's two proteins per one kilobase per RNA per minute, then if you have 20 minutes, and so you multiply these two numbers, it means you have 40 um, proteins that one ribosome could make if it was, you know, looping back really efficiently um, per one kilobase per mRNA, um, uh, per, per kind of mRNA half-life. And so, okay, now if we say, okay, these 40 proteins, um, uh, and we multiply that by the number of ribosomes that can be on the mRNA simultaneously, which we just derived as 15 positions, so we're going to put that in here, equals about um, 600 uh, sort of proteins per mRNA half-life. And we're gonna round that up to 1K just because order magnitudes. Um, okay, cool. So now the last thing we'll do is we'll, we know that um, E. coli has maybe on the order of like 1K genes. And um, we, we you know previously kind of realized that, okay, you can only have a very constrained number of mRNAs per gene. So we're gonna guess it has about 1K RNAs off of that. It's a little bit under, but we're just gonna guess about that much. And so if you can get about 1K proteins per mRNA, and you have maybe on the order of 1K RNAs per cell, you probably have more than that, but just around, around that much, and you will place two numbers together, what you get is about 1 million proteins, which is exactly the same number that we got when we tried to derive the number of proteins um, from the cell by volume. So basically, um, this this is you know maybe an order of magnitude, it could be an order of magnitude off, but kind of the thought experiment gives you this kind of nice feeling for going from kind of running your mind through, you know, how long you can uh, have a protein translate across an mRNA, about how many can fit on an mRNA, about how big an mRNA is, and then takes you back to kind of the number of proteins you would imagine having on a cell, given kind of your guess at how many mRNAs there are from, you know, the, the cell volume that you're looking at, um, because there's so much DNA packed into it. And it's this nice way to kind of, uh, you know, exercise your brain to explore all the different parts of your model. Um, the last thing I'll say is that if you look at the breakdown of proteins in the cell by abundance, and I wish I had included a graph on this, what you'll see is that there's way more protein mass spent uh, on translating things than on transcripting them. So only very little cell energy is spent on making more mRNAs, but a lot is spending on making more proteins. In fact, in um, E. coli, there's about 20%, I think, or so of, of proteins by abundance might be even ribosomes or ribosome related. So there's kind of this cool intuition of like, you know, I started off thinking, okay, you know, mRNAs are these small piddly things, proteins are these large things. Proteins are way tinier than mRNAs, and they're also, um, uh, there's much more time spent translating and making them than is making um, mRNAs. Um, so yeah, mental models are awesome, and um, I will try to improve the lecture format, but if you have any feedback or can give thoughts and advice on kind of the best way to explain these things in a better way, we would love to hear it in the comments below. Thanks!